Plant-Based Treaty. Um, could I invite Nicola Harris, Communications Director of Plant-Based Treaty, to address the committee uh, via Teams. Nicola, can you hear us? Hi, so I'm Nicola Harris. I'm from the Plant-Based Treaty Communications team. As a short introduction, um, Plant-Based Treaty is a global campaign that launched at COP26 in Glasgow. It's modelled on the Fossil Fuel Treaty, which Edinburgh endorsed in March last year. We're currently building momentum and we're creating bottom-up pressure for world leaders to negotiate a global treaty that encourages a shift towards healthy plant-based diets as a companion to the Paris Agreement. One way we are creating this pressure is by cities endorsing the call to action for a plant-based treaty. Um, when Bristol became the first city in Europe to declare a climate emergency, this soon spread across the UK and it led towards Scotland becoming the first country worldwide to declare a climate emergency. To date, 70,000 individuals, 2,000 groups and businesses and 19 cities have endorsed the plant-based treaty, along with more than 200 councillors in the UK and 22 MPs. And these come from across the political spectrum, so Conservatives, DEP, Greens, Labour, Lib Dems and SNP. We are really happy to see that throughout the report, um, you have acknowledged the impact of food on the climate crisis and the mitigation potential of a shift towards plant-based diets, as supported by the IPCC. I applaud the report for publishing the city's estimated consumption-based greenhouse gas emissions of 23%, with just over half of those coming from meat consumption. 100 cities worldwide, known as the C40, have communicated the need for all cities to reduce animal product consumption to help lower consumption-based greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we, uh, we are already using your report as an example of best practices to inspire change. It's been circulated to a number of city councillors across the UK who are interested in partial motions. Um, so we feel you've really raised the bar. We're really pleased to see the positive progress through Meet Free Mondays in schools, and we hope that this will inspire other institutions to follow suit. Um, you're already engaging your youth with fruit and vegetable growing and teaching them about ecosystems, rewilding and biodiversity in the curriculum. So really pleased to see all that. Um, I wanted to reassure you that endorsing the plant-based treaty is akin to a pledge. Um, it's not binding. You're not agreeing to implement the principles of the treaty in its entirety. You are endorsing a call to action for the national governments to come together to negotiate a global plant-based treaty. It's just the same as endorsing the fossil fuel treaty, which you have already done. So you're, you know, you're agreeing in principle this is a good idea to be explored. Um, it adds to public debate. Um, many principles of the treaty are geared towards changes at the national level, such as the land use change, subsidies, although there are a number of principles which you identified yourself in the report, such as promoting plant-based foods, increasing accessibility, and that's something that all institutions can be part of to help bring change. We do want the national governments to address land use because 83% of global farmland is used to raise animals, but it supplies only 18% of calories. Um, agricultural sprawl is the leading cause of degradation and deforestation worldwide and it's driving not only the climate crisis but the biodiversity crisis. Um, not only that but let's think how are we going to feed an expanding global population if we don't shift to sustainable food production if everyone in the world followed the same production to consumption ratio for food as the UK we'd actually need another planet the size of mercury to feed everyone. So yes, we are asking national governments to explore a treaty to halt this global expansion. But where we feel cities play a key role is through community education um, and accessibility. So this could be done through positive nudging. Um, cities, schools and hospitals and institutions can all help with this. And, and that will then have a knock-on effect of reducing pressure on agricultural school. And at the same time, also bringing Health, you know, public health improvements. Um, I noticed that a 2019 Scottish Health Survey found that only 22% of adults actually eat the recommended five daily portions of fruit and vegetables. And you know, if, if people ate five portions of fruit and vegetables a day, it actually lowers the death, death risk from heart disease by 20%. So there are multiple benefits to promoting healthier eating. 
Um, endorsing the plant-based treaty doesn't mean you have to act on planning regulations. As I said, all sectors, they have different roles to play. As an example, in New York City, um, schools have chosen to build upon their meat free Mondays by adding in a plant-powered Fridays. Um, this is something that potentially Edinburgh could look at and explore in the future. Um, across the UK, more than half a dozen councils have already opted to supply plant-based refreshments at their council meetings as a way of setting a good example and lowering their consumption-based emissions. Businesses and work canteens could be encouraged to list plant-based foods more prominently on menus to increase uptake. And like at COP26, catering menus could have labels with carbon footprints. And we know that from studies that eco-labels help impact food choices and raise public awareness. In terms of some other cities who've endorsed the plant-based treaty, um, California, as an example, has the largest dairy industry in the United States. However, Los Angeles happily and unanimously endorsed the plant-based treaty last October, and they called for the United States to enter into a plant-based treaty and make a plant-based approach to food purchasing a centerpiece of its greenhouse gas emission policy. Haywards Heath in the south of the UK, they endorsed the treaty last July and, and they endorsed, endorsed to signpost that the campaign exists as part of its commitment to share information with the community. There is no expectation for you to implement bans on building new farms. However, what you could choose to do um, is help promote plant-based food and increase accessibility within the community. Um, there was a point made in the report about the role of personal, cultural and religious preference. Um, Plant-based foods are actually the most inclusive diet from an allergy, religious and cultural standpoint. Um, there are also um, approaches that have proven very effective, such as greener by default, where, for example, you might offer plant-based milk as a default option and then people would opt to request dairy as an alternative. So it still leaves the choice there, but it helps nudge in a, in a positive way. In terms of personal choice, we, we're always being influenced. Um, our choices are far from sovereign. And this is where public education comes in. If we promote the benefits of climate friendly foods, it helps people make informed choices. We already receive public ed education on many topics, such as like using our car less, turning off the lights, turning off the taps, should we ban smoking in public places? So through sort of positive nudging and expanding plant-based options, it actually it just helps people make those choices and helps encourage a shift to plant-based foods. Um, if Edinburgh chose to develop a plant-based food strategy, um, Plant-Based Treaty would be happy to offer you any support and guidance you need um, through our partners from the Vegan Interfaith Coalition, as well as more than 100 religious leaders who've endorsed the treaty already. So to conclude, um, endorsing the Plant-Based Treaty is just a declaration, it's non-binding. And then beyond that, you, you can choose where Edinburgh goes next. Obviously, it's my hope it would inspire you to go on to explore a plant-based food strategy and build on the amazing progress you've made already. We must address fossil fuels and food emissions in equal measure. Even if fossil fuel production ended immediately today, um, emissions from the food system alone would actually take us above the 1.5 degree target of the Paris Agreement. Eating healthy diets rich in plant-based foods is the most impactful thing that we can do on an individual level. Household con consumer behaviours drive 72% of global emissions and dietary change can lead to huge reductions. Um, countries in the global north have a duty to reduce emissions as fast as possible. The G20 is responsible for over 80% of global greenhouse gas emissions whereas the global south bear the worst climate impacts. We are on the road to climate hell. The decisions we make now are going to determine the type of future that we face. Edinburgh has already endorsed the Fossil Fuel Treaty and given how progressive Edinburgh is, how skilled its labour forces, with the focus on healthcare, endorsing the plant-based treaty is not only the right thing to do, but the city could greatly benefit by adopting a plant forward focus that could come through a plant-based food strategy. We are very happy to work with you, give you all the support you need on any next steps. Um, and so thank you very much for your time. And I, I really hope that Edinburgh will endorse the plant-based treaty.